Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another OpenGL screencast. It's been a while. I've been pretty busy. Um, sorry about that, but we're coming back at you at 720p, and we are ready to roll. So we're going to look at textures again. This is going to be part two of our series for this, and so let's just get rolling on it. Um, most of these are just dealing with setting up for this particular screencast. I've also added a net window position, um, just so you know that it exists. It just moves the position of the actual um, window when you build it. So let me uh, go ahead and make this, and we're just going to go ahead and dive dive right in. So unlike last time, we had lighting, and I'm having lighting off this time. So this is the same. So that's the light. As you can see, the uh, the sphere here is taking on that that texture, and I'll show you why later. Um, so. Definitely something worth noting is, is, you know, hey, what's going on with all that kind of stuff. So, um, nothing really new here. Um, I will show you this real quick. I added an extra texture called Venus. So make sure you grab that when you update your source. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these different shapes real quick that I added and, and some of the binding textures. So I added a cone um, with a current texture. It's the side of the cone right here. We just have the new texture lines as well as the normals to be used for any kind of lighting that we have. Same thing with the bottom. The cube main was mostly untouched from before. And uh, I've added a cylinder. So with the cylinder, I have a little bit of texture problems here, and you'll you'll see it in a moment. Um, but uh, other than that, it's still a pretty solid cylinder, and the sphere as normal, being called. So that's the shapes that are new, are updated. So let's see what's going on right here. So first, we are going to draw the light if we toggle the light on, and we have that texture create set. And then we have draw the cube. So what happens with that light is that textures stay on the way I have it set until you explicitly go ahead and do something like this, where you say current texture is default, uh, which is nothing. So if we were to remake that and turn on lighting, you can see that the lighting just here is no longer uh, with it. Right. So. You can also see that when I turn off lighting, there's a little bit of bug there too, so it's supposed to actually turn off completely, and it's obviously not. So let's kind of just show what's going to happen here um, as we draw several different... Uh, let's just draw one more at a time. So this is the cone. Um, I have it set to 90 degree angles, which therefore it's going to be four of them. As you can see, this is the a... It looks like a single... Um, texture, which that it really is, that's how it's been designed. It's the exact same texture. If you look at this angle, as you do these four corners, that would be like that. So if we were to change this uh, to be, let's say, 5, and we remake it, you can see it looks, it looks pretty solid all the way around. So it looks really good. Um, the sphere this is where I'm using Venus. It's actually a different shape. It's not a perfect square, so that's what we're using for uh, a good-looking sphere. And you could take a look at that exactly. And let me zoom in here. This is Venus, the planet. So you can see it's very detailed. So compare the box details to this, and you could tell. I mean, this this thing comes in a hefty 1.6 meg, so it's it's a lot of detail in there, and. You know that's where a lot of these, uh, a lot of these games nowadays have really, really high-end, nice textures for their, their objects. So, very cool to have that. And let's draw the cylinder. So, cylinder once again it takes on the most recent uh, texture, which is the Venus shape. And you can see this side over here is kind of, kind of wonky. In fact. It's it's like that in, in multiple positions. So if you have the time to, to fix my code, um, that would be fantastic. If not, you know, that's cool. 
I will, I'll figure it out eventually. Um, but the thing is, we could take a look at what each of these are real quick, real quick so you can just kind of get a feel for them. So there's the fire again, same one as that. If we go ahead and do earth, earth, wind, and fire. It looks kind of cool, it's like a little bricky looking thing. Ice. And default. So if you don't specify texture on one of these, it's just going to end up as a nice white plain all cylinder. So that is that. Now we're going to comment these out momentarily and go ahead and I'm going to show you some other actual OpenGL code other than just doing some random shapes here. So I'm going to comment this. I'm going to comment this. There we go. So I'm going to draw this and then we'll walk through each of these. So, so it's just a couple of of squares here. One's a, a two by two square, and one's a, a regular um, one by one square as far as size goes. So um, nothing really special with it. But I will explain a little bit about what is going on with the the texture here. So as you can see, um, let me scroll up. All I'm doing is is binding the ice texture, and then I'm going to draw two quads here. Like I said, one is um, a one by one and one is a two by two and then their texture coordinates you see are greater than one which I said you can't really do before well I kinda lied and we'll get back to what what happens in a second so first thing um, I just want to mention is that we have this text parameter I when we can specify min filter or mag filter here All right now these are currently sent to nearest uh, I didn't actually look up the others on this one, um, but basically this is used to coordinate how a texel, which is the texture pixel, so to say, uh, corresponds to a pixel on screen. So um, it's not necessarily going to be a one-to-one -one ratio all the time, depending on how your um, how your code is. So you know, if you're like this, it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one because you're at a weird funky angle. So that's what those do. Um, so this is where I'm going to show you a couple different things. We have uh, GL text um, texture wrap S and rest wrap T, which are the X and Y uh, coordinates, excuse me, axes. And we have different parameters here: group heat, clamp, clamp to border, clamp to edge, and mirror repeat. I'm going to show you a couple of these. Right now, we have the S is clamped, and the T is repeated. So if we look at this again, the T is repeated and the S is clamped. So as many times as we go up this direction, it's going to repeat on and on. So you can see this is repeated as well, um, twice. And this is repeated twice. This is not repeated at all in um, that direction. So it clamps it, and then the, what it does is it takes the last color bit on each of these sides and just stretches it all the way across. So not necessarily what you always like to do, but we can go ahead and, like, we can change this to, okay, so let's go back to that real quick. So you can see this is the same texture going this direction. Same, you can see the same. If we change this one to mirrored repeat, remake it, you can see it's now mirrored at that point. So, you know, pretty neat uh, that you can do that. You see a little V there, so it's just mirrored. So there's a lot of actually cool things you can do with each of these. So play around with them. Um, have fun, take some time, learn, make mistakes. That's what I did. And so, you know, that's the repeating all the way across. So, uh, you know, depending on what scenario you want, you may or may not want a particular thing. So, moving down here, now we have this environment mode, texture environment mode. And there's six different uh, parameters you can specify this GEL replace, blend, modulate, decal, combine, and add. I'm going to just show you. Um, Modulate and replace today. Modulate's generally the most common. So if you look, we're currently on modulate. And so if we make that, you can see it. So what it does is it specifies how texture values are combined with the color values of the fragment being processed. So how does this come into effect? Well, for example, lighting. So uh, oh, hold on. <laughs> 
I have to keep the lighting on in order to show you guys lighting. Sorry about that. So let's remake that. Lighting! So modulate is affected by lighting and whatnot. Versus, if we go back to replace, I bet you can guess what's going to happen. It's replaced by the light, and then so therefore it's not affected at all. So, you know, play with those. Um, try blend out, try add, see what works for you and what, what you need. Uh, finally, I have a couple more here. Uh, text environment, and this one is the same thing as text environment. This one just takes uh, an integer versus this one takes a, an array of colors. And this one is just what color should be used for the blend. And then finally, we have this other text parameter. Then the, once again, the i versus the v is the uh, integer versus a vector. And this one is the border color. So kind of along the same or similar lines there. So I'm not going to really mess with those. But uh, this has just been part two for you guys to uh, test out. Um, we have a lot more coming up here. I'm probably going to go j jump into animation because that's a lot of fun, and I'm sure that's what a lot of people have been waiting for. So we'll start with those. Um, additionally, I plan on redoing the first 14 screencasts in 720p um, eventually, so look for those forthcoming. And uh, I hope this has helped you guys. Uh, take it easy.